Jesus and said, why do you speak to them in parables? Well, let me tell you what a parable is. <laughs> a parable is some truth that you put right out there, but it's yet hidden. That's how Jesus used to do it. He would put it out there, but yet they would not understand it. And he said, look, they asked him, why do you speak to them in parables? Well, Jesus said, because to them it is not given. But to you it is given. It is given for you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to them it's not given. Now, come, I'm going to explain to you the parable of the sower. So he began to explain. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 3, verse 18. I'm going to read two verses there. That is Matthew chapter 3, verse 18 and verse 19. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Verse 19. Matthew chapter 13. 13, not 3. <laughs> Matthew chapter 13. I may have to read it myself. You know. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then cometh the wicked one. Now, notice the sequence. You know, they heard the word of the kingdom, but they did not engage in the spirit. They did not understand it. So then cometh the wicked one and catch it away from their heart. This is the one that seed that fell by the wayside. Now, Jesus explained this parable. We don't need any other explanation. There are some parables that he did not explain. Just put it out there. This one, he explained it. So we don't need any other further explanation. Now, when you hear the word of the kingdom and you do not engage God in the spirit, then you will not have any understanding. And if you do not have any understanding, then the devil is going to come and catch it away from your heart. Remember, you know, I stand here, every time I stand here, you know, I love to quote, I mean, Psalm 109, I mean, Psalm 119, you know, and I love to quote verse uh, 130. And I always quote it every time I stand here, right? And I say that the entrance of God's word does what? Give it life. Psalm 130, I mean, uh, 119 and verse 130. You know, the entrance of God's word give it light. I quote it just all the time I stand up here. And it gives understanding to the simple. Now, if you hear the word of God and you have no understanding, then the enemy is going to, I mean, that's like <laughs> double trouble. You already heard it, you didn't hear it. I mean, you didn't understand it anyway. And then the devil is going to come and take it from your heart because you didn't want to understand it. You know, wherefore it is written in the scriptures that take heed how you hear and what you hear. For he that hath shall be given more. But he that hath not, especially had no understanding, even that which he hath shall be taken from him. Because the devil will see that he hath no understanding and he's going to come and take it from him. You say, well, what does all this mean? What does this all have to do with me? Well, here's what it means. Anytime you hear the word of the kingdom, you hear somebody preach, even as I'm speaking to you today, maybe hearing me, but unless you are engaging God in the spirit, the flesh will profit you nothing. At the end of the service, you will say, oh, that was a great message. Okay? An hour later, you can't remember what was said, <laughs> let alone a day later. Because you did not engage God in the spirit. You were just there in the moment with the flesh. The emotions. I mean, the emotions of the flesh. You know, and uh, some of us who are skilled preachers, we know how to get people riled up. <laughs> you know, we know certain words to say to get people riled up. You know, I can say some words that get everybody riled up here. <laughs> Especially when you begin to talk about prosperity. Amen. <laughs> you can get people riled up. But that's all in the emotions. People don't, if you don't engage God in the spirit, the word will just pass you by. And it will mean nothing. You know, so my lesson today is this. I'm going to tell you the story now of Enoch. I've told this story before on multiple platforms, including here. 
There was a man called Adam. I don't know if you know this story. But Adam, after the fall, whatever you think that means, that's not my subject today. But after the fall, Adam lost the glory. And the cherubims with the drawn sword were on the gates to the Garden of Eden. And the door was shut. So I'll tell you what. Adam beget a son in his own image called Seth. Forget about Cain and Abel. He begat a son in his image called Seth. Seth begat somebody called Enos. Enos begat somebody called Canaan. Canaan begat somebody called Mahaliel. Mahaliel began somebody called Jared, and Jared became somebody called Enoch. And the Bible says Enoch was the seventh from Adam. You know, all those generations as I listed down. But I guarantee you this. Every one of those people that preceded Enoch, they heard the same stories. You know, the day I brought this here on this platform, I said, use your imagination. It's the untold story, you know, in the book of Genesis. Everybody would have Enos, you know, in fact, Seth was the first one. And they all overlap because many of them live for thousands, I mean, not thousands, hundreds of years. They overlapped. Seth would have seen those cherubims with the flaming sword. Enos would have seen him. Canaan, Mahalel, Jared, everything. They might all have asked the same questions. And they might have heard the same stories. But when one person called Enoch, yeah, use your imagination, asked about what's up with those cherubims? <laughs> and Adam would say, son, <laughs> you can't. I want to go in that garden. You, son, you can't go in there. That door is shut. Why? What happened? You know, begin to tell him. You mean, you mean, <laughs> wait a minute, tell me again. You mean you had that kind of power? I mean, you could talk to the animals. You could go under the sea, talk to the fish, name them. You know, you could command the animals. You could do all of these things. I mean, God will visit you. I mean, you had power, you had dominion, you had all those things. I mean, what happened? Hey, son, it's a long story. Well, I want some of that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I want some of that. Uh, well, you can't get it. The door is shut. Well, you know, and he'll come back and ask some more. I mean, they had thousands, you know, and I keep saying thousands. None of them lead to thousands. They had hundreds of years. And even Adam overlapped this man. By many years. So they have plenty of time to ask. But what I'm bringing out is this. For all the others that preceded Enoch, those stories, they probably just heard it in the flash. <laughs> and then moved on. Oh, that was a great story, Grandpa. And I just move on. You know, no impact to their lives. But one person heard that story. You mean we can have this kind of power with God? I mean, you can have this kind of relationship with God that God can come and visit you and so forth. What happened? <laughs> How did you get to lose that? Then this man began to seek after God. Hallelujah. Amen. When he was 65 years old, he began to seek God for 300 years. And he figured it out. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> He figured it out. He didn't have the Bible, folks. But he sought after God. He said, I want... Adam said, you can't go in there. I said, well, I'm either going in there or what's in there is coming to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm going to die trying, but I am going to get in there. And Adam would tell him about the light. Ooh. <laughs> because Adam was in the light before he was in the darkness. He was wrapped in light. It was like he was walking in a bubble of light. The spirit was on the outside, folks. It was in the flesh. It was made a living spirit. In fact, living soul is a bad translation. Adam was made a living spirit. And God put in him in Genesis 2 and 7. He breathed into him. The spirit of God gave him the complete package. 
Everything that was inside of God deposited inside of him. He had instant knowledge. He knew like God knew. He had dominion like God had dominion. He had the character of God initially until disobedience came. <laughs> and there was a glory that was emanating from him. It was a light. And this light put all the animals in subjection. All of them, they were docile because they could sense that glory from Adam. You know, God never created any wild animals, folks. <laughs> they were never wild until Adam fell from the glory. When he fell from the glory, they, they couldn't sense that commanding presence again. So they began to just be wild, just do anything they wanted. <laughs> but when Adam was in the glory, he, I tell them to sit over there, they would sit over there. And he did whatever they said. In fact, God said, look, whatever you say, Adam goes. What, what, what are you going to call this one? Because, you know, Adam said, well, it's going to be like this. God said, cool, cool. <laughs> what are you going to do to this one? Adam said, God said, cool. So Enoch said, you know, you, you, you had all that, and you mean we lost all that, and we cannot get back there? He said, son, I'm sorry. It's too late. <laughs> this man said, <laughs> One way or another, I'm getting in there, or what's in there is coming to me. I'm chasing after that light. Glory to God. I am chasing after that light. Now, they all heard the same stories. This is the difference between somebody that engages the word in the spirit as well as engaging it in the flesh. Seth and the rest of them, they heard the same stories that Adam told. Don't you think Adam told them stories about all those things? Of course he did. But it made no impact but he made impact on one person that made him to pursue God. I'm going to have that light, and I'm going to get into that light. And he began to be changed from glory to glory. Hallelujah. He began to be changed from glory to glory. The, the further he got away from the darkness and death, the closer he got away to the light and life. You know, and the rate of Death and darkness was consuming everybody. They started with 900 and something years. It was consuming them, consuming them. And Enoch figured out how to outrun that death. Glory to God. Yeah. He figured it out. He ran faster toward the light than the death and darkness could catch up to him. Yeah, amen. And the Bible says, in first, some of you, you know, may say, what is he talking about? Well, you know why? Because we don't hear these things in their churches. <laughs> Our religious systems don't tell us these things. So it's so far-fetched when you hear it that you, you, just, you can't just imagine it. But this is the message that we heard from the beginning, folks. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. And in order for this man to walk with God, he had to become light. He had to expunge all that darkness that was in that generation. I call it the mystery of iniquity that was working since the fall in all of those generations. <laughs> Enoch had to outpace that. Hallelujah. <laughs> and when he outpaced it, and how did it all happen? Because of engaging the Lord in the spirit. He read between the lines of some of the stories that Adam might have told. You know, and so when somebody stands up here, or anywhere for that matter, preaching the word of God to you, don't engage in the flesh, because the flesh profits nothing. But engage God in the spirit. That means even as somebody is saying the word, the Holy Spirit is interpreting it to you. And in fact, sometimes he will take you to a different dimension. And he give you even things deeper than even what the speaker said, but triggered by what the speaker said. That's called engaging God in the spirit. Now, that's our lesson today. We will be praying shortly. You say, well, I thought you'd just come out here and just, you know, preach this kind of thing on a day like, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't tell God what I want to preach. He tells me what I should preach. And... Uh, this is, a, this is what he wanted me to tell you today. Every time you come here or listen to anybody speaking the word, 
be sure that you are engaging God in the spirit. If you do not engage God in the spirit, it won't mean anything to you. Likewise also, after you hear the word, you got to check it out. Hello? In the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 11, we are told that the Bereans, they were more noble than the people in Thessalonica. Why? Because, well, the people in Thessalonica were always grumbling about the word. <laughs> but these people, they heard the word gladly. And they didn't stop there. They went and searched the scriptures to see whether those things are so. That's what we read in Isaiah 8 and 20. You've got to do your own due diligence after you hear the word of God. Hallelujah. Don't take my word for it. <laughs> Don't take anybody's word for it, but take God's word for it. Amen. Amen. You've got to search the scriptures to see whether those things are so. And if they are so, here's what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, prove all things by the word. And then you hold fast to that which is good. Amen. Amen. So always go back to Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony. If anyone, including myself and myself especially, you know, because, you know, you need hold. Everybody needs to be held accountable to the word of God. You know, Jesus, last but not the least, let me tell you something that Jesus said about blind leaders leading the blind. What did he say? Anybody know what Jesus said about blind leaders leading the blind? That two of them will fall into the ditch. But here's what I always say to the people. <laughs> Look, you will only fall into the ditch along with the blind leader if you yourself are blind. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> if the leader is blind, you don't have to be blind. Every one of us has a responsibility. Don't just say, well, you know, you know that's what they say. You know? Well, that's what the children of Israel said. They said, we don't want any part of God Moses, you go hear it from God and come tell it to us. You know, and they lost their right to hear directly from God. In fact, they said, we don't want it. If we hear God, we will die. I've read some sorry things, some pitiful things in the Bible, but that has to rank number one. Why somebody would not want to hear the voice of God? I would die <laughs> for his voice. I want to hear your voice, oh God. Because without your voice, say, look, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, and I give to them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one can pluck them out of my hands, and I will raise them up at the last day. Glory to God. Yeah. So do your due diligence. Search the scriptures. Jesus even told them in John chapter 5, verse 39, he said, search the scriptures, because, you know, the scriptures are they which testify of me. And you think that these scriptures, that's where you find eternal life. Jesus directed them to the scriptures. Don't take my word for it. You search the scriptures. <laughs> Praise God. So search the scriptures, folks. Don't take anybody's word ever for it. But if it is good, if it lines up with the word of God, they hold fast to it. Prove all things or hold fast to that which is good. If you see that it lines up with the word, then you hold fast to it. And don't let anyone pull the wool over your eyes or your head or whatever. You know, we've got the spirit of God, according to 1 John 2, 27. The anointing which you have received is not a lie. And it will teach you all things. Can somebody say amen? amen. And there is no reason for you to fall into the ditch along with any blind leaders. Now, I'm not talking about this church, this local assembly necessarily. I'm just speaking generally. So, everywhere you are, 
You know, if you see people that purport to speak the word of God, put it to the test of the word of God. Amen. Amen. That's right. You know, and gift or no gift. You know, gift or no gift. Check it with the word of God. Because the word of God is the final arbiter. And you must always, in order for you to be able to discern it correctly, you have to engage God in the spirit. I'm going to pray now. I want to ask us to stand to our feet. After this, we're going to change the order of the service and go to the baby dedication. But I wanted you to hear the word of God. Praise God. Praise God. And we heard the word of God today. And I remind you that it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. But the words that Christ has given us, and Jesus also said that these words will judge you on the last day. You know, the words that he speaks, they are spirit and they are life. Let's lift our hands and pray for understanding. Pray that the spirit of God will give you understanding concerning the things you've heard today. And give you understanding whenever you hear the word of God. Because if you don't have understanding, then the devil is going to come and pluck it away. Father, I pray for everyone that's here today. According to your word that says that the entrance of your word gives light. It brings light. And it gives understanding to the simple. And I pray that our hearts, we will learn within our spirit to engage God in the spirit and never in the flesh. Therefore, know we no man after the flesh. Not even Christ anymore after the flesh because he is risen. Hallelujah. So we are not following the flesh. We are not following human beings. We are not doing any of that. We are following the spirit of God. And the spirit of God is what quickens you. I may the Lord quicken everyone that heard this today in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord give you understanding in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now give the Lord a hand clap here this morning. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you can do better than that. I'm sure you can do better. Give the Lord a hand clap. You can do better than that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. You know, I was watching soccer over the last few days, and people were roaring in those stadiums. I mean, I, you know, I don't even know how many people. They said some of those stadiums can sit like 60, 70,000 people. They were roaring. But anytime you say that people should give the Lord a hand clap, it's like, well, you know, <laughs> I don't know about that. But people can roar for somebody that scored a goal. I mean, they can scream, they can yell, they can shout. Now, let's try that again. Let's give the Lord a hand clap here in the house. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I heard some incredible testimonies today, you know, and uh, from the people that were in the house. And we are just truly thankful for all the things that God has been doing for us. And I've got another reason to be especially thankful to you, to the Lord today. I'm coming to you, Brother King and Sister Jojo. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But uh, I have another reason to be thankful to the Lord today. Even though it's not December 3rd, today is the closest day to the anniversary of GMI Church. Amen. Amen. Now, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 2006, December 3rd, we opened our doors in some place. <laughs> and some of you were there. Praise God. And it was just one, you know, office building or something that the Lord allowed us to rent back then. And we had cables running all over the place. You know, because they didn't even have electricity. It wasn't even finished on that day. But look what the Lord has done. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. There are many churches that opened since that time that have closed. I know it personally. 
but see what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. And we are not diminished. We are increasing. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and we have the evidence in the house today. How many of you know we are increasing? Amen. We have evidence. Brother Johnson, bring me that envelope. We have evidence in the house today. And I want you to put your hands together and welcome Sister Jojo to the house the first time after she had her baby. Come on, Jojo, stand up. Let everybody see you. <laughs> ah, Brother King, you had something to do with that, didn't you? Eh? Did you have something to do with that? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> one sister said one time, she said she was just minding her business. I said, well, I, I don't know about that one. It takes two to tango. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Brad James, uh, come up here. Come over here, Brad James. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Augustine, please come. Brother John, please come. Praise God. Brother Barico, please come. Brad, is Brad Julius in the house? I, I don't see him there. All right. Well, let's come. These are our elders in the church. We're going to pray for the baby. Now, I have the names. Uh, where is the... Uh, or you can actually tell us. But this certificate will be presented to you when we finish. So, tell us. But I'm, I'm going to let you give your testimony after. But first, tell us. Tell us the names of the Sheba Isio William. You're better after you talk with her. <laughs> Sheba is um, a name that God gave me when I was a teenager for a girl that I would give birth to. So I, it was modeled after the Queen of Sheba. So you've always had that name in your mind? Yes, yes. And what's the other one? Isio Orene. Isio. Yes. Tell us what that means. That is uh, the star of God. Is that in your language? Yes. Urubu. 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 Yes. Urubu language. Isio what? Orene. I think I have it. <laughs> they are telling me already. <laughs> they are telling me already. Praise God. Amen. Sister Jojo, how does it feel? <laughs> now take the mic. Tell us how it feels. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I can't really put in words. I can't really explain, but I'm just excited and I'm very super grateful and happy, thankful to God. I had a safe delivery. I had a healthy pregnancy and my delivery was smooth. <laughs> my delivery was smooth and uh, the baby's been healthy uh, and growing up really well. So everything has been good, so I'm totally thankful to God. I'm grateful. I'm very happy. I'm very happy to be in your presence. I'm very happy to be back in church to see every one of you. I'm super grateful. <laughs> and thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Tell us, how does it feel? It feels good. Yes, sir. Yeah, it feels really great. You know, um, it's been a wonderful journey. I would first of all like to thank my mom because uh, if it wasn't for her, I don't think this would be happening. She kind of tricked me. 2016, when she came and she said, uh, I don't want any money sent to me, just send me a ticket. So I bought a ticket and she never went back. So she overstayed her, her visa because she wanted to make sure that her first son was married. So I had to readjust everything about my life and my world. And, uh, and that's how everything uh, really started happening. And I flew back to Nigeria and she got all everything orchestrated. So, uh, yeah. So I am so delighted to meet with her that period. And uh, she really impressed me with her personality and she's a, a minister's daughter, 
So I was secured in that aspect. So I felt like I was making a good choice. And with prayers, I took a step of faith in 2017. And uh, God was so kind. And our first son, who is a miracle child because he wasn't supposed to be born. So uh, he had four major surgeries. And that is the reason why I'm so happy to see the way he's hyped. He's a very, uh, he's a warrior and very healthy. The miracle took place in his life. So I'm very, very thankful to God. And um, this particular one is the first experience I'm having uh, as a father, because the first one I wasn't there. And this one, I wanted to make sure that I saw everything. So I stayed and it's just a, a life transforming experience. And I am so happy my daughter is, uh, is changed my world. And I, I just can't express how I feel, you know, this beautiful daughter. She's, uh, yeah, daughter yes, to the in a minute. she's a gift and she's brought real joy into my life. Things are just happening in my life since the pregnancy of her uh, birth took place. So it's just amazing. And I thank God for my wife. She's, uh, she's a sweet uh, mother, and she's really doing an amazing job to my amazement. So I'm so thankful to be by her side. We thank God. And when she came here two years ago, it wasn't easy. And uh, I wanted to make sure everything she wanted was given to her. So um, to find this church after she came here and she said, this is where I want to be. So I had to give up everything just to be here with her so that we can be in one place. And uh, I'm very happy for the church, for what you guys have done, the support, the, the love, the care, everything is amazing. So thank you very much. Praise God. Put your hands together, Lord. Give the mic to Grandma. Praise God, church. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. All the, All the time. I cannot express my happiness. Because, as my son said, when I came, I just called him, I said, Hi, oh, mommy, hi, oh, mommy. I said, it's not good. I want a ticket to America. He said, what for? Are you hungry? You do want money? I said, I don't need to have money. I want your invitation to pass again. I was here 2002, 2004. I didn't stay with him because I said, there's time for him. When I talk about wife, I said, there is time, there is time. I said, okay. I said, but this time, my son, there is no time. And he sent the invitation. <laughs> when I got to the embassy, he said, what are you going to do in America this time? I said, I'm going to America for my first son to give me grandchild. Wow. The mother interviewed me, said, you are going to, he said, we are in America. I said, Arizona. So you are going to have grandchildren in Arizona. Hallelujah. I say, Amen. I say, go to eighth floor and take your visa by two o'clock. The only question. I say, hmm, my God is hearing me. Then when I came, I said, Mommy, why? Can we talk? I say, Yes. I say, I came here. I'm not hungry. I want you to have a wife. He said, No, school, school. I said, No, school. Wife. <laughs> he said, Wife. Okay. I put it in God's hand, and God heard my prayer. He gave me Jojo through my second son, wife. Because everybody was worried. Big daddy having a child, big daddy having a good child. So God have done it for me, yeah. especially for me. Yeah. <laughs> what the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell it all what the Lord has done for me. I cannot
Sing a song in that your wonderful language. I'm going to hold the baby. Yeah, Just put your hands. Ooh, let me put my head behind the baby. I still know how to hold baby. <laughs> I still know how to hold baby. Yes, yeah, so I do. But yeah, give give the oil to Pastor John. You know, Pastor. Okay, you guys anoint the baby, and let's pray. Each one of you say a word of prayer, just quick, and just bless the child. Just quick. God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anoint Sheba, Ebusel. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. this child will live in perfect health and peace and fulfill her destiny to the fullest in Jesus' name. Amen. We anoint you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You will fulfill your destiny and you will be a fright and a flight to all the forces of the enemy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We anoint you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the house of God where the honor of God dwelleth, and you are brought today into the house of God. You are committed into the house of God, into the hand of God, and it will be well with you. Whatever you will do, it will be well with you. Outside, in the home that you are going to, it will be well with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we will thank you for this child. Your word says, all good gift, all perfect gift is from above. 
from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness in that shadow of turning. This child has come to be a blessing, a gift to the body of Christ and to the family. Father, we immunize this child with the fire of God. Mm. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You grow to be a prophetess. Be mighty in the hand of God. With fire coming out of your mouth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's put our hands together for the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now you, you hold the baby this time. Hold the baby. You got it? You got your hand behind? You got it? Okay. Praise God. All right. Praise God. You all may be seated. I want to say uh, just one thank you, elders. I want to say just one thing, you know, and you may be seated too. I want to say just one thing. I know you will, but I must give you this charge. You must bring this young girl up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. You know, let your testimony be such as God had of Abraham. That he said, I know him. Let God say, I know king, that he will order Sheba after the Lord. Amen. And you as mother, you, know, you already know your responsibilities. You know, you have more, more time with this child than anybody else. You know, so the blessing that you give to this child, you know, from you. And the, the knowledge of God that's in you, you impart it to this child all the days of her life. Amen. Praise God. So that's our quick charge to them. I want to thank all friends and families, well wishers and everyone for coming. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we commit this child into the hands of the Lord. All the days of this child, the child shall be growing in knowledge, be growing in favor with God and favor with man. The child shall receive the quick, a, a spirit of quickness in understanding the fear of the Lord. The child shall not fall to the ways of the world and even the things of this generation. She will grow up to fear the Lord. And she'll be a light even in her generation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we thank God for the young man as well. And we thank God for every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us. And you all may stand now. Uh, we praise him. We're going to do our last segment. I'm going to present this certificate. I almost forgot. I got to present this certificate. Last one, two.
the offering. And uh, I want to make a, a quick announcement. Refreshments are served in the banquet hall after service. Courtesy of Brother King, Jojo, the William family. Uh, please make your way after we dismiss. It will be just a minute. Please, you will make your way to the banquet hall. The banquet hall, if you are new, you go straight out this door. You make a left and then another left. And you head to the banquet hall. There will be some refreshments for you to take with you after the service. All right, well, let's... Uh, Let's finish the service. You guys can take some more photos after the service. Uh, so we are going to finish the service now. Let's uh, thank God for the offering. Father, we thank you for the offering that was brought into the house of the Lord. As always, we pray that you bless those who have given and use the, let it be used to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Please sit down for a quick announcement. Now hold on for the photos. Sit down for a quick announcement. Just a couple of quick announcements, just church announcements. You know, on uh, December 17th will be our uh, outreach to the homeless shelter. Uh, GMI will be partnering with the uh, Willing Women. We'll be going there on December 17th. Uh, you still have one more uh, service, which is next uh, Sunday, to bring those items that you would like to donate. So bring them next Sunday by the grace of God. And then on the uh, 17th, did you say 17th? Yeah, on the 17th, which is Saturday, is when we are going to be going. And on that day, when do we meet here? We announce this coming Sunday. Okay. So be here for the announcements this Sunday. And when you get home, please check, your, check the WhatsApp uh, general uh, forum and also check the bulletin board forum. We have posted some announcements regarding some upcoming events, uh, upcoming events. We have our children's service, the last of the year, actually falls on December 25. And uh, that's the only thing we're going to have that day because of Christmas, we won't have anything else so people can go and celebrate with their families. But I want to call your attention to two other events uh, that we announced special times for. Our New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve event, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's really our flagship event throughout the year. New Year's Eve is our flagship event throughout the year. You know, so it's coming up on December 31st, and uh, we're going to be starting that at 9.30. Now, this year, Christmas and New Year's Day fall on a Sunday, and we've had that before. So every time we do that, because of the New Year's Day service, which we must have, amen? Nobody should sit home on New Year's Day. Come on the first day of the year. For service. <laughs> because of that, we normally push out the start of the service a little out. So on that day, that day only, we will start the service at 1230 in the afternoon. It's going to be a brief service, but it will be powerful. Remember, we also have a congregation coming in here after at 4 o'clock. So we're going to have our service instead of the usual 10 o'clock on that first day of the new year. The service will be at 12.30. So plan accordingly. That's because of the late night that we will have the night before. Because we will be here on New Year's Eve celebrating. Amen. And we'll be here till about 1.30 a.m. and so forth. So people can still have time to go home, you know, relax a little bit. And then come back. But be sure you come back for that service. You don't want to miss that. So those are special announcements. Check the bulletin board on WhatsApp and check the general. It's already there. Let's stand up. And we are going to close the uh, service. And don't forget uh, the children's service. We want everybody to come and support the children's ministry. Praise the Lord. Please come and encourage our children's ministry. Don't stay home on that day. Don't stay home and say, oh, it's just children. No. <laughs> Except you be converted and become as these little children. You will not enter the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> so don't despise any one of these children. Bible says anyone that despises them, it's not going to be too funny for that person. So let's not despise the children. Let's come and support them. This will be, they will be having a special service. They do this every quarter. And this 
this last one falls on Christmas Day, we'll have that. And then after that, we will dismiss quickly so people can go and have their service. I mean, they'll spend their day with their families. So that's it. So right after this, after we say the grace now, please head to the banquet hall. Out this door, left, and then left. Praise God. Congratulations again, Brother King and Sister Jojo and Grandma. Congratulations. Let's raise our hands and let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Now surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank you for coming. Please head to the banquet hall.